Hello and welcome to the next part of my Powered Up tutorial that you can use for LEGO Boost, Control Plus and of course Powered Up devices. In the last part we looked at uh, an option to control power functions, infrared receivers with the LEGO Boost color and distance sensor. So you can use a Powered Up hub that you connect to the Powered Up app and you can plug a LEGO Boost color and distance sensor into the Powered Up hub and then you can send infrared signals with the color and distance sensor to a power functions infrared receiver to control it. I suggest you that you watch the last video before you watch this video because it will get even more complicated and the stuff isn't easy. So it's, it makes sense to have a base for that. And in this part I want to put it a bit further. I want to control a power functions vehicle with the powered up remote. But there's no direct connection. The powered up remote uses Bluetooth and the power functions system uses infrared. So I will use a powered up remote. The powered up remote will send the signals to the app that we can program. And then the program can send commands to a powered up hub that can send commands to the LEGO Boost color and distance sensor. And we can use that color and distance sensor to control the power functions vehicle. So basically I want to control the vehicle with the powered up remote with the color and distance sensor in between. There are a few things that we have to talk about first. The problem is that the computer is pretty slow when it has to calculate switches. So we don't want to have many decisions and computers are much faster when it comes to calculating mathematical functions. So we should try to realize this functionality with a function and not with switches. We have the power functions infrared signals from the power functions documentation. I use the combo direct mode that has a timeout and we can control both motors on port A and on port B at the same time with one power functions command. We control the motors with the third nibble and we have 2-bit for one motor and 2-bit for the other motor. And the bits them themselves are pretty similar. We have 0 to float the motor. We have 1 to go forward, 1, 0 to go backward, and 1, 1 to break. These numbers are in binary and we can, can convert them to decimal or hexadecimal. And then we have 0, 0, which is 0, 0, 1, which is 1, 1, 0, which is 2, and 1, 1 which is 3 in hexadecimal and in decimal. But the problem is that the powered up remote has the numbers minus 1 or negative 1 to drive backwards, 0 if no button is being pressed, 1 if the forward button is being pressed, and 127 if we press the stop button. So we have to map the buttons of the powered up remote to the power functions infrared signals. We have to map backward to backward, so we have to map minus 1 to 2, 1 to 1, and 127 to 3, which is this. I hope that you know what a function is. Basically, you have one value, maybe 1, and you want to have some kind of description that turns this 1 into a 0. For that, we have functions in mathematics. So we have our output, sometimes you write f from x and that should be some kind of x or we want to have some kind of x and we, we want to change the x to the number. So let's say that x is 1 and we want to have 0. So we can calculate x minus 1 and then we have 0. So if you enter 1 here, we calculate 1 minus 1 and then we have 0 as a result. But we can use any other x, but x can be every number. So let's say that we enter 5, then we can calculate 5 minus 1, and then we would have 4 as output. But we can also multiply this maybe with 4, and then we get another output. And this is what we want. We want to enter the number minus 1. So we want to say, or we want to put the minus 1 here. And then the output of this should be 2. The same for 0, 0 and 1, 1. And now we can think of a function 
which meets these requirements. I will skip this requirement because 127 is a pretty large number and that would make everything a bit, a bit uglier. So let's stick to these three numbers. And we want to have a function or a translation which translates these numbers. And we can try to come up with a solution with a function that meets these requirements. Or if you're lazy like me, you can use an online tool. There are online polynomial regression tools. And we have a table. We can enter values for x. We can enter outputs. And then it will calculate a function. So let me transfer the values. And for the one, the output should be one. We don't need more values, so we can simply delete these. And now we can say how complicated the output function should be. The minimum type of regression is this one, because we have three input values. And to get a direct output to solve this, you can also use larger regressions, but then every larger number will be zero. So it doesn't really matter. And here we have our output. Let me trans transfer it. We have y is equal to a, but a is 1.5. So we have 1.5x squared plus b, which is minus 0 0.5. So we don't have plus, but minus. 0.5x and then we have plus c but c is 0 so we won't care about that and now we can enter or we can calculate that if we enter minus 1 the output should be 2 if we enter 0 for x the output should be 0 and 1 for 1 that was the first mathematical trick but there's a second one this function will work well, for output A, because these numbers are for the first two bit. But we also need to do the same for output B. But here we have to calculate the first two bit. So if we want to drive the motor on port B forward, we would have to enter 4 and not 0. The encoding is very similar. Both have the same actions with the same numbers. The numbers are simply shifted. And there is another trick, and that's called bit shifting. So let's say that we have a 1 here, then we have 1, then we can shift this one to the left. In that case, we would have 2 as an output. You can translate or you can try to calculate the outputs on your own. We can shift the 2 to the left, then we have the 1 here. That would be 4 in decimal, and you can shift this one to the left. And then we would have 8 in decimal. So it would be cool if we could shift the output for port B to the left, because then we could use this function for both outputs. And there is an operation in informatics that's called bit shifting, and it does what we want. It simply shifts the values to the left or to the right. So we can say use this output but shift it to the left for two places, and then it would be ready for this. But there's an issue. The Powered Up app doesn't support bit shifting. There's a mathematical trick. We can simply multiply the output. So we can multiply our y with the number that we want to shift to. So let's say that we want to shift the y two places to the left, then we can multiply y with 4. And then it will be like this. Let me give you an example. Let's say that we have 1, 0 as input, which is equal to 2. And we want to shift that two variables to the left. So we can multiply that with 4 which would be 0, 1, 0, 0. And then 2 times 4 is 8. So let me convert the decimal number 8 
to binary and that would be one zero 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 and that's what we wanted we shifted one zero two places to the left and now we have zero zero one zero zero so we can use this trick to shift it but now let's get to the program i connected the remote and the hub to the app the remote is the first connection and the hub the second one i built the hub on top of the tracked racer i'm pretty sure that you can come up with a bridge air solution but it's only to show that it works and i think that it's enough for that so now let's start with the program as always we need a start block and we have to change the mode of the color and distance sensor to the infrared mode and that's possible with this block the infrared mode is mode 7 and it's on the second hub in my case it's on port b and now the interesting part comes we want to control the power functions receiver so we have to use this command and we want to do that in a loop because maybe we want to drive to the left to the right and we want to react to that so we have to do that in a loop to react repeatedly and the color distance sensor is on port b of the second hub so we need the hub selection block for this one too, as well and we can use zero for the first value and one for the second value that's because of the mode that we use but now the interesting part starts because we have to implement the function we want to use it as an input so we need this and blue is a pretty good color for that i think but we can use an arrow as an, a symbol and you need an input because we want to know if we want to control the left or the right port so the input should be numeric because ports can be display, displayed as numeric values there's a limitation for my own blocks with this layout with this form factor because in this case we can't use a start point in this my own block that won't work because it's it needs a return value and we can only give a return value if we use blocks that have numbers on top so we have to come up with a function that has a number on top we want to control motor a or motor b on the infrared receiver with this block we want to specify the motor with this input and we have two sides on the remote as well we have the left side and the right side so we can use a remote block to read the value of the remote here we have the site as input and we can simply plug this into the remote input because then we take either the left side of the remote or the right side and then we have to implement our function we have a quadratic factor and a linear factor so we want to use use the exponential block and we want to use this as an input and a 2 here and the factor for that was 1.5 not 105 but 1.5 and we have a second factor so we can use the remote block again and we can use the input and this was times 0 0.5 but it's this one minus that one so we have to use a minus block and that's the my own block we can go back to the main program and now we have this input we can specify the number either a or b and then we get a translated value of the remote input that got translated to the 
numbers that the power functions infrared receiver accepts. And we have to separate them. So we have to bit shift one value or one input. We can do that by multiplying that with, with 4. And we have a normal input. I will take p for that. And now we can simply add one to the other. And now this input is for the first two bit, and this input is for the second two bits. So this controls one motor, and this controls one motor. This is the bit shifting operation that we talked about earlier. And that's already the complete program. It doesn't seem too complicated, but you know what's behind that. And I wanted to use this part to give a bit of a perspective on what can be done with the Powered Up app. It's possible to implement pretty complicated stuff. You just have to do that. And now let's try it out. I'm pretty sure that you won't use this program in this context, but maybe you come up with the own thing that you want to do, and then this gives you help or this explains something that you wanted to use, or you simply use the end product and doesn't and don't care for the explanation. I think that it's pretty cool that you can do stuff that's this complicated with the Powered Up app. You only have to know a few tricks. Oh, and don't press the stop button because we don't uh, we didn't adjust this function for the stop button so if you want to use the stop button you would have to adjust this function here you can try it on your own if you want anyways that was it for this part i've got a request please if you've got complicated program ideas that you can solve on your own ask them in the comments i will try to solve them and I will try to make a video about that. I don't really want to make videos about pretty easy stuff that you should be able to do on your own if you watched the previous parts, but sometimes there are complicated things that you can't solve. And in this case, simply ask me. This might be the end of this tutorial for now, but I will make new parts if I come up with interesting program solutions or ideas, or if a new app update comes out, that has something that I want to talk about. So there will be new parts for this tutorial from time to time, but maybe not as continuously as in the past. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next part of the Powered Up tutorial, whenever that will come out, or maybe in another tutorial that I might do in the future. We'll see, thanks for watching and bye.